Hello, and welcome back. This week we discussed the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War in 1991. We will also consider the birth of a new era in the relationship between countries across the globe. The reasons for the collapse of the Soviet Union are varied, but they ultimately boil down to the inability of the communist Soviet Union to compete economically with the capitalist U.S. and its allies. After a number of years of detente between the two superpowers, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States during the 1980s, reinvigorated the struggle by calling for the end of what he called the evil empire. On the right, you see Reagan demanding at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, Germany, that the Soviet Union knock down the Berlin Wall, which so painfully represented the separation between capitalist and communist countries during the Cold War. This famous speech in 1987, which you can watch in its entirety in this week's online videos section, was a powerful reminder of the United States' commitment to defending countries around the world from the so-called threat of communism. However, the truth was that after decades of competing with the capitalist West, including the heavy investments in the military and nuclear arms races, the Soviet Union was on the brink of economic collapse. In 1985, the last Soviet premier, Mikhail Gorbachev, tried to correct the path by instituting programs of economic restructuring, called perestroika in Russian, and of social reform, called glasnost. Although the reforms were generally welcomed by Soviet citizens, the increased flexibility these programs brought with them actually only speeded up the process of collapse. Rather than be happy with the small changes brought about by Gorbachev, people living in the Soviet Union wanted more. As the 1980s came to a close, nationalist movements grew throughout the Soviet Empire and began to demand independence from communist hegemony. Interestingly enough, it was in the smallest of the Soviet republics that the movements first took hold the strongest. In 1989, Estonia and Latvia were among the first to declare themselves independent from the Soviet Union. Other Eastern European countries, including East Germany and Poland, followed suit later that year, also declaring themselves independent from Soviet influence. The biggest surprise, perhaps, was the lack of a violent reaction from the central Soviet government. In November 1989, Berliners began knocking down the wall that had divided their city for nearly 30 years. You can see images of civilians hammering through the cement wall as East German soldiers look on. This was the most visible sign of the end of Soviet influence. Years earlier, such a scene would have been impossible to imagine. The soldiers would have machine gunned anyone coming close to the wall, let alone try to destroy it. Within a couple of years, the desire for liberation from Soviet dominance had spread to all of the republics in the USSR. One by one, they all declared themselves independent from the Soviet Union. The coup de grace came in 1991, when the Russian Federation, the geographic and political center of the Soviet Union, declared it was separating from the communist regime. Without any more land to control, the Soviet government, with Gorbachev at its head, collapsed and simply ceased to exist. The Cold War had ended. As we have seen with decolonization in Asia and Africa, and the reaction against neo-colonialism in Latin America, nationalism played a critical role in ending 20th century empires around the world. Nationalism, too, contributed to the end of the Cold War in 1991. As it turns out, the communist Soviet regime failed in its attempt to do away with the belief in national identity as opposed to the Soviet notion of internationalism, in which all humans were considered equal across physical boundaries. As dangerous as radical nationalism had been during the Second World War, and you might remember violent expansionist fascist and Nazi nationalism, for example, the end of the Cold War proved that nationalist identity remains a strong unifying element in modern human society. As we've seen today, communism as a dominant ideology capitulated under the growing pressures of nationalism in the late 20th century. Although there are still a number of communist regimes across the globe, China remains the last communist power. As an economic model, and especially as a social and political system, communism was largely rejected. China itself is slowly transitioning towards capitalism. Although the government continues to be characterized by authoritarianism and human rights violations. And even in China, the late 1980s 
brought about displays of popular discontent. The demonstrations in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China's capital, during the summer of 1989, gave the world a glimpse of the discontent felt by many Chinese with the restrictions imposed on them by the communist state. The images you see on this slide are all from the Tiananmen Square events in the uh, summer of 1989. In this case, the government did not collapse, but the events of 1989 pushed the country's political hierarchy to accept loosening social and cultural restrictions and to push forward economic development plans. The great victor of the Cold War, the United States, has emerged from the 40-year conflict as the sole superpower in the world. The move from the bipolarism to the unipolarity of the post-Cold War era has led the United States to take on the role of, quote, policeman of the world. The most salient examples of such policing are the U.S. involvement in the Kosovo crisis in 1989 and in the Middle East with the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001, as well as the wars against Iraq, first in 1991 and again in 2003. This prominence placed the United States as the target for many groups resisting the process of economic, political, and cultural globalization of the late 20th century. We will look at this brave new world next week when we discuss the rise of nationalism, religious fundamentalism, and terrorism in the Middle East in the post-Cold War era. Until then, take care and have a good week.